Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan with Project Northeast, and I'm here with my teammate, as some of you know that watch the channel. Um, I'm on an enduro race team called Team Granite Mountain Bike. And this is Liz. Hi guys. And she's an aspiring amateur enduro racer locally in New England here. And she's looking to just hone her skills um, and she wants to turn pro eventually. Um, and she's well on her way there. She just wants some help honing her skills, learning basics and stuff like that. And one thing that I can give her is how not to do things uh, specifically. But today we're gonna be specifically learning how to drop and how to drop the right way. And that comes down to basically three key areas for me. My basics are number one, rule number one is speed for a drop. You have to have the right speed for a drop to be able to do it properly. Um, too fast, too slow, you're gonna screw something up. And then number two is technique. And the technique is usually the same but you have to use different amounts of technique for, you know, different speeds. And that can get you in trouble, just like it did me and my collarbone. Um, and then the third thing that we're going to go over is confidence. If you don't, it's all in the head. If you don't have confidence to hit it, then maybe you should start smaller and work your way up and come back another day. So first off, we're going to show you guys um, the different speeds, too fast, too slow, and then just right, just like the what is, what is Goldilocks. The Goldilocks. Yeah. And then we're going to go through a few different ways of how not to do drops um, that I've learned through the years. And then we're going to go through and we're going to have Liz do some drops on her own. We're just going to look at how she does them, look at her technique see if we can improve them um and then we're going to go through that in the video at the end of the video and see if she improves by the end of this video all right sounds good so step one let's try out the different speeds and see how it operates the drop first we have too slow you can notice on my takeoff i'm almost buzzing my butt on the tire trying to get too far back to compensate to keep the front wheel from dropping the same thing's happening on the landing where I'm almost buzzing my butt on the tire because I'm too far back. Second, we have too fast. In this example, you can see I'm going way too fast, overshooting the landing, and I'm having a harsh landing, which could result in loss of control and a crash. Thirdly, we have just the right speed for this particular drop, where there's minimal body movement needed for the proper speed. All right, now that we've covered how the speed works, we're gonna cover a few different ways of how not to do drops. Um, I've seen it many times of like improper technique, uh, myself included, getting bitten, um, and then having to recover from injury and get back at it and then start all over again. When then step three comes in with the confidence and you whack it again. Um, so let's just go over a few different ways that I know of how not to do them. First up we have the classic bunny hop, where you can see by this video I'm extending my limbs almost all the way and I'm landing pretty harsh. And this could result in a crash blowing a foot off a pedal, blowing a hand off the handlebars, or simply doing it too late or too early could cause a crash. Second we have the wheelie drop. Now this is more of an advanced trials move to where if you're on a ledge and you want to drop off, you're doing a wheelie and landing on your back wheel. But this is more of an advanced move that I wouldn't suggest for anybody trying to learn drops. And again, with this technique, if done too early or too late, it could result in a really bad crash. Next up is the manual drop. Now you've probably seen people manualing all the way down a drop and then landing perfectly. But if you're not a pro at manuals and you end your manual too early or too late, this could result in a really bad crash. All right, so before we go over and watch how Liz does drops currently, we're just gonna go over the technique real quick of how I do drops and what comes into my mind every single time um, over the, about the mechanics of how to do a drop. Um, I did have an argue, argument with a buddy the other day. He argued that the, the mechanics of a drop are the same as a manual. Um, and I kind of argued with him. I, I agree to a point. Um, it's the same basic movement of getting your um, your weight back a little bit, but I think it's different in a way that the point of a manual is you want to 
you want to move your weight back over the rear axle even farther, as close to the rear tire, so you can get your front wheel up to a balance point. Um, and you're not really doing that with a drop. Um, you can and you may need to if your speed is incorrect and you need to compensate. Um, but that's not how I think of the proper way to do a drop. Um, when I think of a way to do a drop, I think of the standard attack position where your elbows are out and bent, your knees are bent, you're crouched low, eyes forward, and you're looking at what's coming at you in the terrain. And you're ready to pump the terrain and get ready for what's coming at you. So in one fluid motion, when you're going off of a drop, you need to, one, have the right speed, and then two, technique is much like a manual, but I still think it's different. Because you're in attack position and you're firing your weight back and straightening your limbs a little bit. You're still keeping your knees bent to a point, but you're not going down and back like a manual because you'll be too low and you do not want to buzz your butt on the tire off the end of a drop. And I'll show you right now what happens. Dropping. So like I was saying, in attack position, elbows out, knees bent, down low, eyes forward, and you're shifting your weight back. And then, so when you land, your limbs are extended, and then when you come down, you can absorb the impact and go right back to the attack position. And you can absorb some of the impact, especially if you're on a hard tail, that technique matters even more. All right, so now that we've gone over the technique, Let's take a look and uh, put Liz on the camera and see how she does. All right, so in that particular drop, we saw Liz kind of like, she never really got in attack position. She was just kind of like standing up on her bike and she kind of did a little hop and I think she just forgot maybe to get an attack position, but let's try a few more times um, with the technique that I was just showing you guys um, of being in attack position and then just lengthening yourself and moving your weight back. You're not going down and back and making an L like on a manual, but you're just simply elongating and getting your hips and your weight back a little bit behind the axle because number one, you shouldn't have to go way back if your speed is right. So let's give it a few more tries and then uh, we'll see if she improves and see if she what she thinks. What did you think you were doing wrong in the first one versus like the rest of the ones that you were? I think I just like had my brain off and was kind of cold and just like went just went for it and had like bad habits. And then as soon as I like remember to like drop my heels and get in tap position, it felt smoother and sounded smoother. I could not hear like the, the clank of the bed. Right, because like one thing that I noticed in the video, watching back the video of your first one, your body was upright. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. your torso was more like like this, yeah. And you were like crouched like this, but then you went like this and landed like this. But and that's why I think like, like what you're talking about. You weren't in attack position. Your torso was not down more level with the bike. Yeah. With the top two, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's maybe. I wasn't in bike mode yet. <laughs> weren't in bike mode. Yeah. But that's the thing, like. We all make those kind of bike things where if we're lazy or we don't remember our head game if we're doing the wrong speed, we use the wrong technique. Um, so that's kind of like the, where the mental game comes in. Like obviously the first drop, you weren't. Yeah, I needed my mental check of like, yeah, attack position or heels down, whatever you have to say to yourself. Right, so you just have to remember like, this is a very controlled environment. You have three drops that are made perfectly and the landing is the same for all three. You're not going to find that on most trails. But that's when where the third step comes in. 
being in the right mindset and having your head in the game. Like if you just come and you're lazy or something like that and you come to a drop um, and that's kind of the crash video I showed you earlier, that's what happened to me. I didn't, my head wasn't in the game that day. I think what gets me is the men in the mental game is that if you've done it before, like you say, oh, I've done it before, I should be able to do it. But like, I'm a different rider every day, and so that's what's hard. It's like, oh, like I should be able to do it because I've done it so many times, but some days I'm not feeling it. Right, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, the day that you're not feeling it, the head, play head game comes into play, and maybe you should just say, well, I'll skip it today. Yeah, that's you what know? I've learned to do so I don't hurt myself, yeah. Right, and that's the biggest thing is you can do it, force yourself to do it, but then like me, it's like, I wasn't feeling it. And then because I wasn't feeling it, I didn't have the correct speed. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't have the correct speed, I used the improper technique and I way overcompensated, buzzed my butt on the rear tire, just as it was leaving the rock and my front end dropped down, went nine feet to my shoulder and broke my collarbone. Yep. And then was out of the game for a good four months. I feel like I've heard that story so many times. Someone wasn't feeling it that day, but felt like they should do it. They did it. They got hurt because they weren't. Yeah, they weren't in the right mental space. Yep. Yeah. It all comes down to those three for me. Um, if you're not feeling it, maybe wait till another day when you know you've got the confidence that you're gonna have the right speed and that you're gonna be on your game to remember. I want to be in attack mode and have the proper technique for the speed. Yeah. So I know there's probably gonna be tons of comments in the comments about I wouldn't do it that way I wouldn't do it this way blah blah blah. I'm not saying this is the end all be all of how to do drops um, I talked to Liz and she was looking for a little bit of help um, and do you feel like this helped at all I mean yeah I feel like if nothing else like the it reminds me of like the mental game and to do my body check beforehand because it's like there's no reason why I mean yeah done this drop however many times I've done way larger drops but like yeah just keep myself like on my mental point to do it consistently, especially when it comes to like race time, because sometimes you don't have a choice and you have to like, so if I can have some sort of like mental cue right beforehand to, to hit it right. Right. And speed is huge. I've definitely overshot things. I got myself in trouble that way. So like remind, like remembering to, like that the proper speed, not too much speed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Like I said, it's not a end all be all of uh, how to do drops, but it's how I do drops and work through it, um, especially post injury. Um, I really kind of take it seriously, evaluating like, well, is it really worth it? Um, and honestly, like I'm, I'm not like any less confident than I was before, but maybe I'm just, I'll maybe make a little bit better decision than I did before. That's how to keep it fun. Yeah, keep yeah. it fun. Yeah. Ride another day. Yeah. All right, hit that like, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you like the video and you want to support the channel, uh, you can always hit the thanks button down at the bottom. You can join Patreon, help support the channel, pays for all this equipment and everything else. And uh, <laughs> hopefully we can help list along in some other instructional videos coming up. Um, and we'll just try and work out a little bit of kinks here and there on the technique. And maybe we will, maybe we won't. Maybe she already knows everything already. But maybe we'll get there and uh, she'll turn pro. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> all right.